What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Let's Play Drill Dozer. I, of course, am What the Fnu, and in this episode, we're finally going to be taking our first steps into the heart of the Skuller Factory. Oh, yes, indeed, we will go. We will drive off into the sunset, or rather the night, as it were. <laughs> you look up in the sky, it's already a little dark, so we kind of missed that train a long time ago. <laughs> oh, it feels so good coming to this game again after all these years. Just hopping in and all of the bobbing and platforming. Platformers in general just seem to be my bag. Like, you'll notice many of my reviews have all been positive ones going up. I don't think I've ever met a platformer I didn't like. Well, I don't know, if you count Sonic 06, but then again, that's kind of a given for anybody. And I don't think anybody liked that game. Although, if you look online, there are one or two people I've seen, so I guess that point's kind of moot. You'll find that happens to you a lot when you're commentating over things. Like, you'll just throw something out there because it makes sense in the moment, and then you stop to think about it for a second, and you're like, wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> More often than not, you will find most of the things you say during while well, you're playing a video game or Let's Playing just do not make any kind of sense whatsoever. It's like you turn into a different person. You can't help it. I mean, you are acting like yourself. I'm not... I'm, I'm trying to be exactly who I am. That's the first step, is being authentic. You can't fake something like this. You can't be going in to it with unhonest intentions. People can read that. Gamers especially. We I've said it before and I'll say it again. We have built-in nonsense meters. We can smell it. We can see it. We can taste it coming a mile away. And before we head up there, how about we jump over here and remember that jelly block we used to get up here? How about we pull a trick and send ourselves flying off this way into this treasure chest? And then this introduces a brand new mechanic in the game. We found a round stone! I guess this is closer to Pokemon than we first thought. But no, this is in fact a treasure. Now there's quite a few of them in this game, and they're hidden all over the stages. Unfortunately, most of them cannot be acquired without the without later upgrades that you're going to get in the game, and yes, this will require a lot of backtracking to get every single one of them, so just uh, bear in mind that they're there. We will be going after them, and... Oh boy, yeah, it's gonna take some time, so pack a sandwich for that trip. Anyways, now we're gonna shift into second gear. Shift into turbo. The show gets a lot of flack. I don't know why... People get so focused on things like Jungle Fury that they forget that under Disney's rule, Power Rangers actually did fairly well when it comes to shows like RPM. Alright, pay attention to this boss right here. When you're fighting this guy, something you want to pay attention to is the arms. Like, what order they bring enemies in. If the first claw is holding either an enemy with... If the first claw is holding nothing, haul ass to the left. But if it's holding something, like one of those spring enemies, then immediately go to the right. And this is why. You'll notice those gun-toting enemies, those bullet-firing enemies that he dropped down. If you don't position yourself like that, you'll end up getting shot. Here, I'll show it off. Like, if I just sit over here, number one, I'm going to get landed on by that enemy, but if I'm not careful, usually he'll he'll put one of those gun enemies in the corner of the room, and so you're not going to be ready for it. You're not going to be in a position where you can take care of that. Other than that, whenever you clear out the enemies, just drill into his core, and you'll be done with this in no time. Also, if you happen to take a whole lot of damage during that fight, there's some health right there if you need it. Always need more health, except when your bar is full. Like... <clears throat> Something about that just fundamentally bugs me, now that I think about it. Like, the fact that the game is saying you cannot become... It's almost like saying... I understand the limit in terms of a machine, like it's made of metal. In this case, it doesn't bug me too much, but what about heroes? It's like... It's as if the game is saying that there is an absolute limit to how much health you can possibly have. Like, a human being cannot become stronger than they are in that moment. There is a finite cap to how much endurance they can possibly have, which, I don't know. I don't know why that, it makes sense from a logical standpoint, but at the same time, I just, I don't know. You can't work out, you can't build stamina, you can't. I think the whole point of video games is that whole escapist fantasy. That whole idea that we can be something more than what we can be in real life. Maybe that's why it kind of bothers me a little bit. And he, 
right there, Grams is explaining something that else we can do. It's telling you about the whole looking around mechanic, but this serves more of a purpose than you might think. By looking in specific directions, you can get a view around your area. So if the giant crack in the floor isn't enough of an indication, yes, you can look down here and see, hey, maybe that's where I should be going next. There we go. It takes us down here so we can flip the switch. You drop the bomb. That's the first song that came to my head that had any kind of action in it. And ooh, look at this. Oh man, look at all these high-tech computers. All this fancy schmancy equipment doing all these computings. All, all these compute. <laughs> Fuck it, let's just blow them up, shall we? <laughs> I was going for a joke, but I just, once again, tripped over my own words a little too quickly there. Also, you'll notice something interesting about what the way this game's hit detection works. You'll actually hit an object behind the object you're aiming for if you get up too close to it. Just an interesting little detail. I haven't... The one thing I haven't done in regards to this game is look up speedruns yet. That's one thing I want to do. Maybe get some tri tips and tricks on how to run these stages faster. Because I actually have a story to talk about in terms of this. When it comes to my Let's Plays these days, the process is much different than what it used to be in the past. Before I just record an episode, and then I would put it up just as is, you know, kind of take what I got. Obviously, if there was some gigantic problem, I'd go in and fix that. I, I am not a foreigner to the idea of editing, but at the same time, it was a mostly painless process. Well, painless, if you will. I'm just using a relative term there. I, I rather enjoy this very much, but... By the way, it's just easier to take the hits here instead of trying to deflect the bullets, because you'll be going back and forth constantly. Nowadays, the process is a lot different. I will practice a stage again and again and again, and be able to run it from what I can see perfectly before I hop into making an episode, before I even begin the commentary. And even after that, I will record multiple takes of any particular run, of any particular go-through of a level, just because... I find that it's helpful. It Sometimes I'll get commentary that I didn't expect, or maybe I'll trip over my words a little less this time. It'll give me a better idea of what to say and when, what would be witty, what types of words to use. And I've also been studying things like that, like word choice, composition, using things that make my voice seem powerful and interesting. And hell, oh, gonna deflect that enemy right there. No, thank you. I don't want any of what you're selling. Like most human beings, I do not appreciate a, po a pointed object being poked into my skull. Thank you very much. Like phrases like that. If I had used cranium instead of skull, that would have sounded oblong. Like that's not something a whole lot of people say often. And it makes it stand out. It makes it interesting and fun. I've been thinking a lot more and more of that lately because of one thing. This is something that happened during one of my live streams. By the way, check out my live streams if you haven't already. It's a great place to check. And I need the followers. Why am I whispering about all this? It doesn't make any sense. But anyways, yes. Um, I actually had a guest caller on one episode of the Pizza Cast not too long ago. By the way, that's another series you should you should probably check out if you want to support me from time to time. But or support me just in general. I don't know where that phrase came from. Point I'm trying to get to. I had Vire 2 on the stream, and I asked him, what is the one thing you want to see out of Team Pizza in the future? Out of all the things we could possibly make, what is the one thing you want more than anything else? You know what his answer was? It wasn't a type of game like I thought it was going to be. It wasn't a particular type of genre or production. What he said in his exact words was quality content. So, I took that to heart. Everything I make from this point on is going to be as good as I can possibly make it. I don't mean to sound like I'm bragging or anything, but that's just how I'm going to go about it from now on. By the way, check this out. This is the way you're supposed to go about this fight. You go back and forth between the enemies using that launching technique you learn off of all the jelly blocks. And this way, each tank will be brought down just a little bit at a time. And you'll, keep, you'll be keeping their health bars mostly similar, up to the point where you finally defeat one of them. Now this is by design, I found. Because if you do this properly, this battle is really easy. Like, I got through that relatively painless, but there is something you miss by doing that. And I will show that off right now. Alright, now let's say you destroy one of the tanks before you take out the other one. Inevitably, once this thing guy is done yelling at us, he's going to go into a bit of a rage mode. 
And it's like, no, I wanted to kill him. <laughs> or something funny along those lines. Like, no, that guy owed me money. Which is basically the only way you could take something like this. Which, which is kind of a shame. I've always wanted to see a story that turns that around and looks at things from the goon's point of view. Like... Maybe there's this one goon who fights heroes all the time, but he wakes up in his bed the morning after, not even realizing what happened. He's got all... Well, he does realize what happened. He's compiled, like, all of this knowledge of all these fights he's had against people, and is smarter for it, and yet he's still nameless in a lot of situations. But I don't want to go off on a rambling on that. Let's return to the actual playthrough, shall we? Kind of interesting, isn't it? If you're not that skillful in the fight, it actually has something else planted for you. But by using all the skills you learned in the stage over the course of the game, sort of applying the principles that you learned, you actually avoid making things much more difficult for yourself. Don't get me wrong, it's still feasible to beat that fight as I just showed, but in the end, it saves you time, it saves you frustration, and just rewards your skill. And I'm always looking for that. I'm always willing to reward a company that has the foresight to make that happen. And of course, Game Freak is no stranger to good game design at this point. I mean, come on, they've been at this for... what? When this game came out, it was like over a decade? God, I wish this game did better. I really do. I want to see more of it. I want to see Jill be more than just a cameo in Smash Brothers. Although, the fact that she was in Smash Brothers at all, even if it was just an assist trophy, is amazing. I guess I'll be happy for that. Just the fact that I'm... I can't say it enough. I want more people to talk about this game. I want more people to remember it. These enemies right here, they're going to cause you problems if you're not careful. And oh boy, you got to be careful here. It, you saw that one flashing like, like that, right? What you're trying to do... They will turn electric if you let them. And they... The timing is kind of weird to avoid getting hit by that. You'd think after they landed and they stopped using the electricity. No, they carry it with them for one more bounce. So after they land the second time, that's when you want to hit them again. And here, they're going to explain another new mechanic. And to be fair, this is not something we covered in the Red Dozer's training course. This is how you slide in this game. You've got to crouch and press A. And this way you'll be able to slip through tight gaps like that. Uh, honestly, it's not something that gets used too much outside of the later levels and some of the uh, challenge maps. And, oh boy, d don't even talk to me about the challenge maps right now. <laughs> and by the way, another little interesting detail. If you get yourself up close to that as possible, you'll just slide through. You actually have to aim yourself at the corner of this little ledge right here as close as you can get, and then you'll be able to nab yourself all these chips. Yeah, screw you too, Game Freak. <laughs> you can't even tell at first glance. That's one of the things. And I just got done telling you you had the foresight for good design, too. For shame, guys. For shame. Because that's not something you can tell right off the bat, is how far you can actually go. You haven't been using it long enough to understand. You know, unless you're like me and you've been playing the game for, god, I don't even know how many years now. That's something I can't even make an educated guess about. Uh, no! Ugh. You even have a specific hit animation for that. You turn all red instead of just, like, flashing. It's to let you know that you've been hit by an attack that your drill cannot cancel out, so... Hopefully you won't be seeing me make that mistake too much in the future, but I guarantee at least once it's going to happen. Let's also break these lamps right here. I'm not going to drop any chips, unfortunately. That, however, is going to drop a lot of chips. And like I said, you can never have too many chips. Once you pop, you just can't stop, I'm telling you. Ooh, health. Imagine if the full commercial was just like that every time. Once you pop, you just can't stop, I'm telling you. Ooh, health. No context, no setup for it in the commercial. They just used that as their full catchphrase every time. <laughs> All right, well, if you're just going to plant yourself in the ground for me, I'm not going to be opposed to it. And there we go. I think that's going to take us near the end of the stage. Right after this is the boss fight. In fact, we walk in here, and we're going to find the person who's been causing us all that trouble all this time. And ooh, our treasure! Well, that was easy. The red diamond's right there. What? Have you never heard of knocking? It drives me insane when people do that. 
I always feel like I have to put extra emphasis on it when you put when you do it in capitals. That is the point of writing like that on the internet. That is Krug, the evil mega boss of the Skullers. And Shell pops out and looks at him like, "Holy hot molten gold, you ugly!" <laughs> Only the most repulsive villain would do something like that. A villain? Ha! <laughs> That's pretty rich coming from a gang of thieves. See, I'm always bugged by arguments like that. Like the villain saying, you're just like me in a, in a role-playing game. I'll get to that in a second here, but he's going to fly off with our diamond. And he's just going to leave us down here. Well, good sir, if you're going to steal my family heirloom, I'm going to break all of your precious expensive furniture. How do you like that? Oh yeah, look at the shiny black leather on, the cha on that chair. I'm sure that cost you a pretty penny. Yoink! <laughs> Unfortunately, though, we can't break everything in this room. We cannot destroy his moose head. But I guess we can't ask for everything, right? We can, however, break his desk, and that's going to give us a lot of chips. Well, relatively a lot of chips. Not a giant treasure trove, but like I said, every little bit helps. But yes, villains comparing the heroes to themselves. That argument is bull, and I will claim that to the day I die. I'm just waiting for the hero that turns that around on the villain and says... Like, the whole argument is that you've gone through the entire game and all you've done is kill their minions up to this point to get what you wanted. Basically, their argument is you're committing mass murder in order to get, in order to make your dreams come true, which is what makes the villain so evil, it would seem. And at first, it seems like they have a good argument until you realize the motivations behind those two people doing what they do. A villain kills somebody just because they think it's fun. A hero does it because they have no choice. It's because a couple deaths are going to save the lives of thousands of people. If this person gets their way, then they are going to cause infinite suffering and sadness to countless individuals because of, because of the hero's failure. It's what's on the line that causes the difference here, and it's the motivations behind why they do what they do, which is why I will never believe anybody who does that will have any sort of validity. It's the same reason Far Cry 3 bothers me. I just cannot... I see so many people trying to take this art house indie approach and saying that, oh, it's that moment in the dream sequence where he realizes he's just like the person he's been fighting the whole game. Bullshit! <laughs> Bullshit! This is bullshit. <laughs> so anyway, we're having a little bit of a drill battle over here. And we're also having a bit of a bomb battle. Little bit of a bomb battle. Those things are a much smaller threat than you might think. And I think they're a pretty small threat to begin with, so that's saying quite a bit. Unfortunately, if you let go of your drill right there, like I did, before you get up to gear three, it's going to cost you. This thing's going to poke you in the butt, and you're not going to have a whole lot of fun at all. Well, well, well. Hmm. I'd say that's one broken tail, my friend. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> I love how I didn't even intend to do that, but her sticking her nose out at that tank kind of made like she was making out with it. Just giving a little kiss. Right on the tip. <laughs> kiss of death, because I'm about to send this thing packing to its grave. You're supposed to wait for that thing to light up and show its weak point to you, but you can get away with just hopping up while it's opening and closing its mouth rapidly. Not a single hit from the bombs. Not bad. Usually I take at least one piece of damage from those guys, but no, we got out of that with no problem. Oh, come on, give me the boom. Look at that high-rendered explosion! Or at least high-rendered for the Game Boy, anyway. You know what I love about explosions? They're unique. Every single one is like a snowflake. They're just beautiful in their own special way. Not so in this game. I I've noticed this. What is it about Nintendo games, and especially franchises that people don't pay attention to much, and explosions all being similar? Like, Star Fox 64 did this exact same thing. Every boss had that... <laughs> That same round, spheric, perfectly spherical explosion. And in this game, yeah, get used to that effect you just saw right back there, because we will be seeing it a lot. And by a lot, I mean every time we defeat a major boss. 
So yeah, Krug ran away with our diamond, even though we beat him fair and square. And we're not gonna stop hunting him until we steal it back! We're on the streets, they're headed for the art gallery. Oh, some guy stopped by to visit. I've never seen him before. Who was that? Oh, you don't know him? That's an old buddy of mine who runs this shop. You should grab as many chips as you can while you're roaming around. Then you can spend them at a shop to buy all kinds of great stuff. You can buy energy tanks from him and use them to upgrade your dozer. Yes, this is why I say you can never have enough chips. And no, I'm not going to save on screen. <laughs> Not gonna screw myself over again, even though I have multiple backup files. You can now visit the shop here. Now, what can I sell you? Now, this is the important part. First, we'll buy an energy tank from this guy, which will boost up our energy to 200 instead of the normal 100 we have in the stages. And you know what? We've got the chips because of all our poking around, so why don't we buy a second one on top of it and boost ourselves up to 300 energy! 400 babies. Anyways. But, he still has energy tanks left over, and we only have 86 chips. That's not even a qu- well, no, it is over a quarter. It's 350, uh, that's 10. So that's an extra 100. <laughs> no, it's- No, it's not even- it's not even a fourth. I was- I was right. It's, no, wait a minute. No, I'm not taking it. What is math? <laughs> I'm not, I can't think about this while I'm commentating on a video game. And speaking of chips, though, and speaking of quality, good thing I brought both those things up at the same time, because now I have something to show off to all of you. I admit, even though I'm practicing these stages again and again, I am not perfect. Once in a while, I'm going to miss things. And thus, you'll notice here that I missed a secret in the first stage. See, I accidentally saved during one of my practice runs, and because I didn't have any backup files at the time, I had to play through the entire game over again, which I don't mind so much, because I love this game. I've been playing it for years, but I missed this gigantic cache of chips, and I do mean big. This could mean the difference between getting that extra energy tank or not. There are so many little secrets in this game that are hidden, and... If you guys spot anything, by all means, tell me. Tell me that it's there and let me know that I missed something. Call me out because I want to point out as much of this game as I possibly can. Show off as, as much of it as I possibly can. And so with that in mind, next time on Let's Play Drill Dozer, we will be expanding our cultural boundaries and heading to the art museum. Now we're really an indie company. So guys, thank you for watching me. Remember, if you like this video, please leave a like in the description below. It still feels weird to say that, <laughs> I gotta admit. Uh, but comment if you like. And you know what? If you really like me, subscribe. I don't... I fe It's weird that I feel the need to say it, but stats don't lie. It does work. So, I will see you guys then. Until then, later everybody!